So welcome to My Smart Tech TV. Today I'm joined by Ian Richardson, who's the chairman of the KNX National Group. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Jess. Pleasure to be here. So Ian, to start off with, tell me a bit about you and your background. Okay, I've uh, worked in the electrical industry for uh, probably 40, 45 years, which is uh, far too long, you could say. Um, more recently, I, I got involved with uh, home and building automation. Um, so I've been involved in that space for about 15 odd years. Um, 10 years ago, uh, I worked for ABB Australia uh, as, as one of the major suppliers in this sector. Um, about 10 years ago, um, a group of industry representatives, manufacturers, system integrators and such got together and we decided to form the KNX National Group. So KNX is a, an international association, uh, mainly coming out of Europe, but now it is truly global. And that is a, a true industry association. So it's made up of manufacturers, um, universities, uh, all sorts of people, integrators and such. Um, so they are involved with this technology called KNX, um, which is dedicated to the home and building space. In Australia, we started a national group locally and uh, I, I was elected to be the, uh, the chairman uh, way back in 2000. Um, and I've been re-elected ever since. So um, the, uh, the purpose of that group is just to promote the merits of KNX. Um, those merits being mainly that uh, it's fundamentally vendor not specific. So it means no particular manufacturer owns the technology, it's controlled by the association, and that means there's free access to everybody. What this means for the integrators uh, and end users is there's an absolute choice about what they use, about which brand they use, which product they use, and everything works seamlessly together. So all in all, it's a fantastic system. That's great. And so you mentioned there uh, when you know people are selecting these different um, these different things. I want to talk about the smart home because that's obviously a big part of what you guys sort of do. Can, just to start off with, let's start at the beginning. From your perspective, what is a smart home? As, as the terminology of smart home, I believe, has changed a bit over the years. Um, some years ago, a smart home meant you could walk into a room, the lights turned on automatically, and that was fantastic. Um, we've gone a little bit further than that, and I'm starting to use the terminology of a smarter home. So, yes, we can control lighting, and that's the first thing that everybody thinks about when you think of a smart home. But nowadays, we can combine so many things. We can have, obviously, lighting control and varieties of that, whether it's uh, on-off or it's dimming or daylight harvesting and all sorts of things. Um, we can combine that with blind and shutter control. We, we can work with the air conditioning systems and the HVAC, heating and ventilation systems. And it all works, again, on a, a single platform. So literally one press of a button, you can go to your theatre room if you happen to have one, and uh, you set the mood lighting where you want it, you turn the air conditioning to your optimum value, the television comes on, all of your AV system fires up and you're ready to watch um, a movie or whatever uh, in your optimum circumstances. So this is where the, the smarter home is starting to come into vogue. Again, there are many people that um, they're, they're getting caught up quite a lot with these voice assistants, the digital voice assistants. Um, and a lot of advertising on that by those companies that have those devices, uh, the Apple, and, uh, Amazon and Google. Um, and people think, oh, all I have to do is speak to this wonderful little device and it will do everything for me. Well, it, it kind of does, but you need more things in the background. And this is where the home automation aspect of it comes in. So it's important that these um, home and building automation systems they will converse seamlessly with the voice assistants and it gives people that creature comfort. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is the true meaning of the smart home or the smarter home. One of the things that we promote a lot is to, for people to think about standardisation. So if you've got multiple manufacturers, you've got multiple voice assistants and, and anything that you want, it all operates on the same platform. And this is really what KNX is. It's a standardized platform. Different manufacturers work with that. I, I mentioned at the beginning, I worked for 
one of the companies, ABB. Um, we've got a big suite of product which is designed to work with KNX. There's 500 manufacturers that all produce product for this KNX system. So the choice comes back then to the homeowner, the integrator, exactly which product they want to use, which features they're looking for, which price point they want, which is obviously important. Um, very competitive because everyone's on the same system and it all just works. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, that's great. And I guess, yeah, if people were kind of not having that, um, you know, not using a platform like KNX and it could get quite confusing and things wouldn't be necessarily maybe working well together. Is that kind of... Uh, you, you could do a Google search now and there's there's a multitude of so-called home automation suppliers out there. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, um, it makes it for a very competitive landscape, which is good for the end user. What you've got to think about is, well, how long are these companies going to be around? Um, if they're not based on a standard, they could be here for another 30 years. They might not be. Whereas if, a, if the technology you're using is based on a standard, whether a company comes and goes, the standard will always be there. So there will always be options that you can add. Um, to put that to the test, um, this standard was introduced around about 19. 19- in 99. Um, it became an international standard in 2006. But there are systems that have been installed way back in the early 2000s that you can come along with a product with 2021 technology and put it on the same system because it's standardised. Mm-hmm. Now, there's not many uh, protocols that would allow you to do that. Mm-hmm. So the backward compatibility is there. Therefore, forward compatibility is here. So back in the day, um, touchscreens were, were barely thought of. You know, it's, it's all science fiction stuff. Um, now you can have a multitude of touchscreens to operate your home automation and it all will go onto a system that was installed 20, 30 years ago. So they're the benefits of it. Taking to the next level, the smart home to, to us would then become part of a smart neighbourhood a smart suburb and the smart city. Everyone's talking about smart cities these days. And part of that issue is is if all the buildings in a city are operating on the same system, that means you can integrate them far more easily. So that common platform is really important as far as we're concerned. And in in an industry like this, where it is so um, advanced and and, and, rapidly growing, do you find that the standards and the protocols are changing rapidly as well or are they kind of quite there, there's different things coming in um so far um, since 2006 there's only been one building automation standard um and that's the one that knx complies with so that's why so many manufacturers around the world have jumped onto this particular standard and, and we've got this compatibility we have uh, in the lighting industry for example we have um a dali control system not so much used in home but in larger commercial premises. Um, and that's become their pseudo standard for, for that lighting control. Well, that interfaces with KNX and it's quite seamless in how it operates. So that's fine. The um, heating and ventilation industry, they use more industrial styles of, uh, of protocols. A very common one is BACnet. Um, again, that interfaces directly to, to something like KNX. Because it's used all around the world, uh, these interfaces are readily available and and quite economic and easy to do. So it all comes down to platforms. Um, There's a big suite of of, uh, standards that are being looked at, I know, at the international level. Um, They are all interrelated, shall we say. So, uh, and often a lot of them have their specific niches that they're looking at. But right now, uh, and in the immediate future, there's only one complete international standard, which is the one that KNX is based on. That's great. And just going back, now you mentioned that the smart home forms part of the neighbourhood, part of the city. Let's go back to the smart home because that's where yeah. everyday people like myself can can kind of um, get okay. started with yeah. things. So for someone who's listening who has absolutely no clue where to start, what would your advice be for getting started with a smart home? It's really talking to an integrator, and there's a lot of integrators out there. 
Um, you've got your, your household electricians. Um, a lot of them are becoming qualified in, in smart home technology, which is great. They're the guys that are, are doing the basic work, the wiring and everything on the home. Um, in more complex situations, you've got dedicated system integrators because that's their focus. Uh, so really talking to those and in a sense, just your imagination. What would you like to happen? Because I'm sure they can make it happen. And some people get very futuristic. You know, they've been watching the old TV shows and you know all this futuristic science fiction sort of stuff. Um, it's all quite possible these days. So it's whatever your mind wants you to do, and obviously your budget comes into it as well. So anything is virtually anything is achievable. It's really hamstrung by how much money you want to spend, number one, and to what level you want to take it. If you're happy just for the, the lights to automatically come on whenever you go into a room and automatically go off when you leave, dead simple, easy to do that. As I mentioned before, to, to integrate this into your, your air conditioning and your ventilation and your blinds, and shutters, um, your door entry system, and all sorts of aspects of, of home life, it's all possible. So, yeah, whatever you want. Oh, yeah, it's, I, and it's so funny. I always think, imagine if you could go back in time and show people, you know, that you can click your fingers and put lights on now and all these sorts of things. It would almost feel like it's, you know, some sort of magic or something, but it's actually, um, you know, it's something that we can do now. You mentioned there that, um, you know, that some people that go really far with it and they're really into it. Is there anything that you've seen uh, with what you do um, that is someone who's taken it to the next level, like someone who's really um, done something that's maybe not mainstream, but just kind of really interesting with when it comes uh, to home? I guess it's all extensions of, of what's possible and I've got a, a fairly good handle on what is possible. A lot of people don't go to, to that level, but uh, I know there's some... The very high end expensive properties generally. Um, and there's properties sort of circling Sydney Harbour, for example. And we know the, the value of these properties, it's crazy, really. Um, but there are properties there, and people have put a touch screen in every single bedroom. Now, in a normal home, you, you wouldn't do that. It's, it's quite unnecessary. But if you've got the, the capability and that's what you want, why not? It's, it's easy enough to do. So, uh, as I say, it, you're, you're hamstrung by your imagination as far as what you could do. And it just takes it to that extra level. And what about um, any cautions that people should take? Is there anything that you kind of need to be wary of when you're starting the smart home journey? <laughs> uh, oh, it, it's, I suppose, buy beware, but um, as long as you're working with a good integrator or a good electrician, um, someone that you can trust, um, that's where it all starts. So um, often the architects might be able to refer you to, to particular people that are, that are working in that space that they know of. Um, and that's really your starting point. Um, fortunately, there's, there's not many bad integrators around. Um, the market sorts people out. So the guys that are involved, and particularly with KNX, um, the amount of training which is available, uh, somebody involved with KNX has actually been certified by the, the international authority. So they've done a training course. It's a five-day training course. They, they have to sit an exam to get a pass to receive their certification. And then there's more advanced levels they can go to. And then there's ongoing training, which is, which is happening as well. And on top of that, you've got the suppliers. Each of the suppliers do their own levels of training. So there's a wealth of of training capability which is available and uh, the integrators are taking that up um, and again their imagination comes along and say well I want to do this with that and that and that and let's make it happen and they, they, they're they the ones that can suggest some, some mind-blowing uh, experiences for a person's home. Uh, they've got the experience, they've got the knowledge and they can do it. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, like, it's, you know, like with anything in life, you know, if you go see a doctor or a dentist, you do your research and make sure that they've got the right um, exactly. background, accreditations and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm sure that's the same when it comes to this as well. Often in um, some of the websites and knx.org.au, you know, there, there's a lot of reference case studies which have been shown there. 
And that gives an explanation of uh, what is possible. Um, you know, in some instances, people are incorporating their renewable energy, uh, even uh, wind turbines and solar, um, plus batteries, all coming into the, the overall smart home experience. And there's plenty of um, case studies that are, are like that, um, both locally and around the world. And this is where it just sort of feeds you, your brain to think, oh, what could I do? Oh, wow, I can do all of this. Electric vehicles are coming into vogue now. Um, a big thing with EV is, well, we've got to charge these things. So is the power supply going to be available? The home automation system, the so-called smart home, can manage that. So you're charging your vehicle when power is available. Now, eventually, a lot of people will have battery backup. And we can manage that. You know, what what uh, renewable energy is charging the battery? When the battery is at full charge, that's the time that you use that power to charge your car. Um, if you're very low and you don't particularly want to draw from the grid, you want to save money, okay, let's time it properly. But it all happens automatically in the background. So all of these things are possible. Yeah. And there's one thing having, you know, you have all these amazing lights and shutters and everything else, but if you've not got the network and the power supply and the at the heart of everything, I suppose that's the um, that's what you've got to get right when it comes to this. Is that it, very much so? And these people are talking about energy efficiency for a long time. Um, and one of the things about life in general, we're going away from fossil fuels and we're heading more onto electrical energy now. The the uh, uh, the utilities have to get their head around this now. They have to generate more clean power. There's a lot of pressure on them to do that. Um, we're getting rid of the old coal-fired power stations, which Australia has certainly relied on for many, many years. That means the availability of power, uh, is, it needs to be managed. And by having um, smart homes building into smart cities, we can manage that in a, a more collective area. So uh, in, in a micro example, like right in your home, You've got some renewables on your roof, some solar, you've got a battery there and everything's fine. But your next door neighbour hasn't quite got the reserve of power. Uh, now, in the future sometime, this can all be interrelated. So um, I need power, you've got power. Let's pull it all together and not pull too much from the grid. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is a little bit utopian, but... Um, this is where it's possible to go, but we really need to have everything standardised to be able to do that. Yeah. So now the future is exciting. It's it really is exciting. exciting. And, it's, yeah. and, you know, it's not just about, you know, fancy lights and air conditioning. It actually, this stuff will make a real impact on, on climate change and on the world. And so it's, 100%. it's got so much benefit to it. Thank you so much for your time today, Ian. Is there it's anything that, you've, that I've missed that you wanted to say? Um, any yeah. um, I didn't cover. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered it well. Um, obviously, if people have um, have questions or anything like that, they can just, there's a website showing on the, the back of the screen there. Um, yeah, have a dive into there and have a look. Um, do your Google searches for, uh, I'd love you to do a Google search for KNX, but do it for uh, building automation and just see what is available, what what are the things that people have been doing um, both locally and overseas? And that'll stimulate these examples of what is possible for you to do in your own home. Great. And yeah, you guys have lots of uh, great resources on your website. So we'll link to that in the show Absolutely. as well. Yes. Well, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much, Thank Jess. You. Good to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs>